Hey everyone, welcome back to The Nature Patch. Today I'm going to be doing my July garden tour. It's the 31st of July now, so this is going to give a wrap up of the month of July and what's been happening. I try to do these garden videos at the end of each month to show you monthly progress. So it's still the middle of winter here. We're getting down to about five degrees Celsius overnight, most nights. We are a little bit more inland, so we do get a bit of the chilly mornings. So I haven't started all of my seeds for my spring and summer seedlings yet, um, but I have done my first big round of seed sowing that'll probably be in the next video or the video after that. So this month I have put together a few more garden beds. I've sowed a lot of seeds that can deal with um, some of the cooler overnight temperatures. I've also marked out the big main patch, which is kind of over in that area near the shed. Um, so that's my big in-ground patch. So a lot has changed in there. And I'll also show you what's going well and what's not doing too well in the garden at the moment. So it's about 4.30 right now and it will slowly get a bit darker in this video, but hopefully the lighting is okay. So I'll quickly give you a tour of the garden and show you what's been happening over the month of July. So I am currently at the back of the house and I'm going to give you an update on our worm farm. We keep that pretty close to the house so we can put scraps straight into it and when we don't have to walk too far. Um, so it's nice and convenient for us. So I'll show you how that's going. So we keep it right here on the patio. So I have put an old towel over this just to keep it nice and dark and warm in there over the cooler nights. And I just fed them recently, so I'll show you what that looks like. So this I put on this morning, and this is just a mixture of lots of um, vegetable scraps like bananas, potato peels, um, some paper from a flower packet. And usually on top of this I'll sprinkle some leaves and soil over the top. So that's all of the fresh scraps. On the other side is where I put some scraps the other day and as you can see they're still slowly decaying but you can see some worms in there so yeah there's quite a few in there all moving around and happy and they're all slowly just going through all of the food scraps and veggies and once they're done with this layer I'll put it down to the next layer so once the top layer there's all full um, I will harvest any of the castings that have um, gone through to this layer and then move this empty layer up the top, move the full layer down here and wait for this to all decompose um, and then use on the garden and then just repeat the process. So moving down from the worm farm, we've also got um, the compost bin down here. So I'll show you how that's going. So this is what it's looking like. It's not too wet, it's not too dry. Um, and this has significantly decreased. Last time I was in, last time I was putting stuff in here, it was about up to here. And now it's definitely decomposed a lot and it is nice and warm in there um, to kill all of the harmful bacteria and have everything breaking down. So I'm pretty happy with how that's going. And I just get this from Bunnings. It's the, um, the smallest uh, tumbleweed composter. So that's going really well. And then I keep a um, bucket of straw away from the fence, away from the horses, <laughs> um, next to the compost that I put on top of any food scraps that I put in to keep that wet and dry balance. And moving on, looking back towards the house here, I've put these new two garden beds in here. So this is kind of a feature that I've wanted for a while to attract birds to the house. Um, I need to fill up the water in the bird bath um, but either side of the bird bath I have some pots with some daffodils in them and then in these two beds I've tried to put in a mixture of flowers and different greens and herbs that we'll use um, close to the kitchen so in here I've got a row of cornflowers here and then I've got a mixture of some spinach kale also got a calendula that I replaced one of the kale because um, a nice little birdie ate that. I've got some Swan River daisies and a whole patch of garlic as well that I'm just trialing to see if it bulbs. That's a plus but otherwise we'll just eat the green garlic like spring onions. Then moving over from that one, um, this one here, 
again needs a good water and something's been eating the lettuce as you can see from that little stalk which is annoying but that's okay i've got some lettuce and spinach going down that row um then i've got three salvias in here these are blue salvias um, i've also got some leeks that i chucked in that needed a home and behind that my pineapple sage as well which has got its first flowers on it and then I had some more cornflowers down here but they didn't do too well so that's okay I can replace that with some more flowers too so moving on from there my lemon tree has had a nice little trim it's looking a bit manky before um, but I've just trimmed it to give it a bit more shape and I've also taken off most of the fruit except these two here and I want the tree to put all of its energy into this and then a completely random lettuce started growing in there and I was like cool it's looking nice and healthy and I'm probably gonna harvest some of this for dinner tonight because I'm having some burgers so I'll show you my little seed raising station here it's just beside the house it holds a little bit more warmth because it's next to the bricks of the house so the temperatures don't get as low which is good um, but this is how but uh, this is how I have set it up, just on a little big plant stand that I got. I'm not going to go through all of these seeds because I did do a seed sowing video. Um, but that's just the general, just lots of flowers and herbs and greens in this lot. And turning around, I've got some more seedlings growing there. And we'll go over to the raised patch now. So some things in this patch are doing great and others really aren't. So I'm going to run through what's doing good and what's not um the first bed here was the bed that i had on um on a video on how to fill my raised beds and most of the things are doing okay i think it's just been a little bit chilly for um a lot of growth but the nasturtium up the back's kind of struggling a little bit but all of the lettuce are doing really good um the onions that row of onions are also struggling a little bit but the leeks are all looking nice and I've just given them a little bit of top up with some soil. Definitely need to give this a bit of a water. You don't want it to get too dry, especially with these um, no dig beds, but I'm hoping that it rains over the next few days so I won't have to do that. This bed over here is definitely struggling a little bit. I think what happened in here, I over watered it and a lot of the plants got root rot. I think that's what happened with the peas up the back. Um, they're all getting really cracked but they're all flowering at the moment so they might come back but let's see the lettuce isn't really going too great it's very slow and the Chinese broccoli is coming back now a little bit more um, but not as big as I want it to be so what I'm gonna do is start some seedlings and instead put the seedlings into this bed I'm also gonna fill it up um, with a bunch of compost because it has reduced a lot in size um, so this bed needs a little bit of love and care I've also got some tomato seedlings at the moment these are all of my experimental tomatoes <laughs> um, I have no idea what variety they are because I just found them in the garden and they seem to be doing nicely just took them out of the garden and popped them into some pots and they're all doing fairly well except this little guy here isn't too happy we'll see how they go I have a feeling they might be cherry tomatoes but um yeah I'm not sure so I'm excited to just try them see how they go I'm gonna pop these back in the ground when I find some space um, but I'm doing the next round of my seed sowing will be all of my tomato seeds and then up from there um, the Mediterranean beds doing nicely with the um, with the lavender about to flower and warrigal greens and parsley are doing great as well moving on to this bed here um, I had to replant this because a lot of I again overwatered things <laughs> and this bed doesn't get a lot of Sun so it really struggled to dry out but I replanted it with lots of kale Lots of kale, bunches of leeks, some garlic, it's a random carrot back there, um, some spinach up the back, 
and some more garlic on this side. I'm pretty excited for this bed because um, I can put a lid over the top of it because I know that the cabbage moth is going to come out when it starts to get a little bit warmer um, and I won't have to worry about the kale in this bed like I will in some of the other beds that can't be covered. Um, but because this is one of the um, veggie pods, I have the veggie pod lid that I'll be putting over this for a little bit more protection in the warmer months. And then behind me is the main bed. This is the big wooden bed that I have filled and I've already harvested some things from here. I harvested all the radishes last night and had that in a stir fry. All the nasturtiums are absolutely loving it. The lettuce is doing great. Um, I need to help those peas, those sugar snack peas, prop up a little bit more. Um, lots of nice pak choy, um, beetroots, happy. Again, another random tomato that I may leave in there. With a lot of the radishes, I um, just basically did a chop and drop. So I harvested the radishes, chopped all their leaves off just because they were quite ridden with a lot of bugs. And um, have just put them back back into the bed just to give a little bit more nitrogen. The pea towers are doing nice, although this one, um, I think the soil is a little bit too rich for the peas on this side. I think it's just the manure wasn't too, wasn't fully rutted down. So I think these are struggling a little bit, but the ones on the other side, the melting mammoth snow peas are doing good. I haven't gotten any peas yet. Um, but fingers crossed they do soon because they're getting to the top. <laughs> so, yeah. Again, snow peas are my favorite things to grow. So I'm really hoping I do get some uh, from these ones here. I have a feeling this stalk will give me some. I'm not too sure about the other one, but I am going to be keeping my fingers crossed. Now I'm gonna walk over to the in-ground patch where lots of things have changed. So I will give you an update on how that's going. Okay, so now we are coming into this patch here. So I have marked it all out and planned a lot of the beds so far. And planted quite a lot. I'll start with this row here. I'm not going to go through everything. I'm just going to give you an update on what's going great and what's not. My borage plant is coming back to life. It was a little bit, little bit eaten before by some black bugs. Um, but I'm happy that's coming back. And I've also planted some sweet alice on either side. Um, so I'm hoping that kind of bunches out and sprawls up because I love the flowers of these. My pak choy, or bok choy, I'm not too sure which one it is, is getting eaten by bugs. So the plan for this is actually to make a soap spray and just spray all of these leafy greens that are being eaten because of most of them in this bed, like that big patch down there, are being eaten by the same thing. So I've got a big bunch of greens there. Um, a nice little calendula that is slowly coming up. My rows of carrots are doing nicely. They're all growing fast and some more um, rocket there is doing well. My onions are doing okay. They're just really slow, but I'm hoping um, as it starts to get a little bit warmer, they will shoot up a bit more. There's so many weeds in these beds, that's so annoying, but I'm trying to keep on top of it. And then I've got lots of rocket and some more pak choy. My leeks are doing nicely. Um, they've definitely grown a lot. So I'm happy with these, just need to go through and weed them all. Uh, my beetroot, yeah, very slow, and my big patch of turnips as well pretty slow and on this side here I've got two rows of onions and some leeks the leeks are everything's going pretty slow um, yeah there's not too much to report about that uh, my tomato is doing nice again it's pretty slow growth I did pick off some flowers the other day but I don't want it to flower and fruit yet I just want it to put all of its energy into growing stronger and on the other side, I've just got some more rows of leeks and onions. And then my um, sugar snap peas are doing well here. I've just created a little support for all of them here to grow up. And then I've got some more radish here that I've sowed. 
Um, lots more rocket that needs that spray. And some more beetroot over there. The newest bed that I've created is a no dig bed behind me here. And this has got some garlic and kale in it. And I made this bed by pretty much layering well rotted manure with the sugarcane mulch and just did a few layers of each um, to create this bed and also added some worm castings on top. Everything seems to be growing nicely. I've got some kale here and then I've got some garlic coming up as well. Again, if it doesn't bulb, that's perfectly fine. We're just going to eat it like we would um, shallots and spring onions. That is pretty much it for the July garden update. My next project is to sort out all of this behind me. <laughs> I'm still under two minds about whether I'm gonna do this no dig or whether I am going to dig up the soil. And this soil is quite possibly some of the worst soil I've ever dealt with. It is so compact, there is no life within the soil, so I'm experimenting on how to add more life into this soil because it is really sad. It's not good. Um, so I'm collecting as much manure and mulch as I can from around me, but it does get a bit expensive when you start to add up everything to do everything no dig. So I'm doing as much no dig as I can afford right now. And then the rest I will be digging some of the ground up just to add a little bit more nutrients but from then on, that's it. No dig from there. So I'm gonna see how they both go, what works well and what doesn't. Um, this area really needs a lot of work, um, needs a lot of life into the soil and a lot of a lot more organic matter. So I'm super excited to have my compost um, decomposing as fast as I can so I can use it as fast as I can. And also my worm farm, I'm using that. And I'm also experimenting with a few other ways on how to add life back into the soil that I will be sharing in another video. And that pretty much includes ways to use your household waste in the garden to create better soil. And so I'm gonna go inside. I've had a long day at uni working. I really hope you enjoyed this little garden update. A lot has changed since the other one. I'm trying to take it slowly and do everything as best as I can rather than rushing through it all and getting as much in the ground as I can. Um, I really want to make sure that my soil is healthy and that my plants have nutrients to grow. So that's going to be the focus of August is getting my soil health up and I'm excited to share new ways on how I'm doing that. So thank you so much for watching this July garden tour. I hope you are having a lovely day wherever you are in the world and I will see you in my next video. Bye!